What up crew? So it's been one year since I started this channel and basically to say thank you, I made this. Let me show you how I did it. So I'm first taking the YouTube logo and bringing it into Fusion 360 to sketch something that can house a light. I wanted to make the whole thing as interactive as possible and to use as many different types of creating during this entire build. Then it's off to the Dremel 3D45 printer. This is a great FDM machine that lays filament layers with pretty good speed. This button took about 10 hours to print. Now, I made a modification to this that has completely changed my life and no more worries about scraping things off the build plate. And that's this magnetic plate, which is really flexible. It's just so nice and the objects peel right off the platform. I was also surprised how well the support material came off and didn't leave any pieces behind. The Skip Bandit found this old piece of acrylic and so I decided to make the inside play button out of it. I'm still staying in the Dremel family by using this small saw and it does a good job. After knocking off the sharp edges and corners, I'm test fitting it. I made two of these triangles, one for the inside and one to stay flush with the front. I'm upcycling, I've always wanted to use that word, and this old LED light bulb came from my time in Porto at the Paris de Cura festival with Chris from Get Hands Dirty. It's a simple button switch, but the wires are too short, so I'm just gonna extend them. And no, I did not paint my middle finger, it's a war wound from a previous project. Looks pretty cool though. Anyway, now that I have the position where the light is gonna go, I'm adding the battery pack behind the frame. I want the play button to stay popped up, so I'm drilling some little indented holes for springs to attach. Oh, and I also gave this a spray of white paint off camera. It will help the light to make the entire button glow. And now for the most over-engineered way to use 3D printing in one small project. The guys at Digits to Widgets have one of the largest SLS machines, which basically lays a thin layer of nylon powder two degrees below melting point, and then a laser comes over and centers the specific parts together. This takes about 24 hours, and at the end you have a wonderful mound of nylon powder that you get to find your part in. Since this powder acts as support material, and is very flexible and strong, you can create small and intricate parts that could not be made with the hobbyist 3D machines. The tricky part is actually finding it. While we're looking for the parts, I'll quickly show you what I designed to hold the springs.
They're printed in these boxes, so it's easily organized, but there's a ton of powder that needs to be removed. So it's off to the bead blaster to clean up all the detailed areas. I've been working with Digits to Widgets for the last couple years now, and they are a great bureau for making objects related to architecture, jewelry, art, dentistry, and many other industries. They're located in the middle of London in the same building as the studio, and if you're looking for some more info, I'll leave their website in the description. All right, now to make this hopefully not more complicated, we're gonna take our printed parts, put them inside of the holes that we drilled too big, and then the springs will fit inside of that. Oh, perfect. Now I need to have a way of attaching the red logo to the front of the board. I didn't want to glue it because I wanted to have a way of removing it in the future. So a trick that I've used in the past is heating up a metal nut and then melting it in the PLA directly on the part. I wanted to have each of the subscribers on the largest display lights as possible, so I bought the biggest I could find, all for under 10 bucks. Finishing off with Dremel tools, I'm bringing the handheld rotary tool to the party. I'm not as smart as Becky Stern, so this doesn't have Wi-Fi, it's just the direct lights on the seven segment display powered by a five volt cell phone charger through a breadboard. Maybe I'll integrate it with all that smart stuff in the future, but for this build, I just wanted to show the hardware side of how much I appreciate all my subscribers. So basically, I wanna say thank you for following along with me and helping me with these crazy projects. We may have to put another digit on here for the next one uh, if we get to 10,000. Looking forward to it. Thanks again, and quote out. <laughs>